Hey, how about a miracle? Could you use one right about now? If so, in this video, we're going to be talking all about Norman Vincent Peale's small little book, Expect a Miracle, Make Miracles Happen. I'm going to be sharing with you three big ideas that you can put to work right now today to start causing more miracles in your business and your life. If you're new here, I'm Mark Phillips. On this channel, we talk about business and lifestyle design from the inside out, helping you create more of the experiences you want to have. And in this specific series called Big Ideas, I share my favorite takeaways from popular books and movies and essays, all designed to help you get more of what you want by applying these small little nuggets from these books. And this book is a small little book. So before we get into the video, I want to just say if you get any value from this video at any point in time, please give it a thumbs up. That would be super awesome. That helps me out. Consider subscribing for more videos like this in the Big Ideas series, also episodes of Enhancing the Human Experiences, Experience, <laughs> and episodes of On the Move, my car vlog series. So, Norman Vincent Peale, let's talk about him for a minute. This little book I picked up somewhere, I don't know where, probably at a secondhand bookstore, but it's super thin and it's a quick read. And I like these little books because they deliver the knowledge we need really quick and it's not a lot of fluff in there. I mean, obviously Norman Vincent Peale is more well known for this book, Power Through Positive, The Power of Positive Thinking, excuse me. And that's probably his best known book. And then this little one here, uh, which I have not read yet, you can if you think you can. So he was obviously huge on positivity and positive mental attitude type stuff. Let me read you, just to give you a little context about who he was, if you aren't aware of him or maybe you didn't know this, but I'm just going to read this short paragraph from Wikipedia. Okay, he was born in 1898, died in 1993, and he was an American minister and author known for his work in popularizing the concept of positive thinking. Super awesome. Especially through his best-selling book, The Power of Positive Thinking. He served as the pastor of Marble Collegiate Church, New York, from 1932 until 1984, leading a Reformed Church in America congregation. Peel was a personal friend of President Richard Nixon. Donald Trump attended Peel's church while growing up, as well as marrying his first wife, Ivana, there. That's interesting, interesting tidbit. Peel's ideas and techniques were controversial, and he received frequent criticism both from church figures and from the psychiatric profession. I don't really understand that, but whatever. I can't see how you're going to argue with someone who's preaching positive mental attitude and positive thinking, but it is what it is. So, this little book, um, why it's important is because we, we need to cause miracles in our lives so that we can transcend i call it like the the carnal experience or the you know mere mortal or physical experience because we are divine beings spiritual beings enjoying this human experience this is kind of the basis of a lot of the things that i talk about on this channel and so we need to believe in miracles we need to like accept them as being possible every single moment of our day because it's going to make the human experience much more rich and rewarding and so that's why it's important to expect miracles and learn how to cause miracles. And so in this video, like I say, I'm going to share with you those three big ideas starting right now. The first big idea is to, to cause more miracles in your life. Norman Vincent Peale says, strengthen your faith and rise above doubt. So I've talked a lot about doubt and fear on the channel before. And in my experience, and when I see experience of other people, doubt and fear erode our belief and erode our ability to create miracles and and manifest awesome experiences into our lives like it, it erodes that right it's very dangerous to think of doubt and think of what you fear right one of the challenges that you know one of the remedies for doubt and fear in my own experience is to not think of myself as a human being right limited human being but to think of myself as an infinite creative spiritual being that cannot be harmed by anything in the physical world. And so that's one of my most potent remedies for removing doubt and fear from my consciousness. And so when he talks about strengthening your faith and rising above doubt, that that's really important to cause miracles. If, if we're in the state of doubt and a state of defeat or worry or anxiety, we're not going to see a bunch of miracles. 
And let's talk about that from, say, a more metaphysical or uh, I'm going to stretch a little bit here and say scientific approach. You know, everything's vibration, everything's energy in the universe. And when we're vibrating in fear and doubt and anxiety, what is that? What emanates from us, right? Our our energy is going to be way off. And then what we attract are going to be somewhere in the range of fear, doubt, anxiety. Not great experiences to say the least. So when we strengthen our faith and rise above doubt, I mean, if you think of it on a continuum scale of of energies, right? You've got guilt and shame down at the very bottom, and then you've got joy and wisdom and positive expectation and enthusiasm and zest up at the up at the top, right? Appreciation is up there too. You, we want to get as high as we can, and so when he's talking about rising above doubt, you're moving up the scale. And and as vibrational beings, we want to be way high on that scale. So strengthen your faith and rise up on that scale and rise above fear and doubt. So that's the first big takeaway, the first big idea. The second one is to become a believer, right? You and I both know that belief is the foundation of our experience, right? What we believe becomes self-fulfilling prophecy. And so when you believe in miracles and you view them as something very commonplace, which I really encourage you to do, even make lists of miracles that have happened in your own life, or maybe you've seen miracles happen in other people's lives, that counts. We're all interconnected and we're all helping one another rise up this vibrational scale. When you believe in miracles and you see them as commonplace, like you have a list of 50 quote unquote miracles that have happened to you in your life, you're going to be in an expecting state that miracles are going to continue to happen. And so that's one of the things that I encourage. I'm always looking for not only positive aspects and things to love and appreciate in my experience, because I know that that sets up a vibration in me that attracts more of those experiences, right? More things to love and appreciate. But I'm also looking for miracles, right? That have happened to me or other people that I know so that I can, so that I can start to believe that miracles are super common and they happen every day. And to that point, let me just share with you this little passage from the book here, because he addresses this. He's like, I want to tell you what a miracle really is so that we bring it down off the pedestal that we sometimes put it up on as this really rare and really hard to come by experience. So he says this, um, and he's talking about this because he was talking about this person that had a lot of things happening to him, but no miracles. And the guy was like, I don't know what else to do. The, the whole book, let me just tell you, the whole book starts with this guy coming up to him and says, look, everything's going wrong for me. I can't figure anything out. Nothing's working. And he was so in a state of that low vibration, the total opposite of positive expectancy, the total opposite of loving and appreciating his life and being in the spirit of joy that Norman Vincent Peale just said to him, expect a miracle and walked away. And the guy was like, what do you mean by expect a miracle? And Norman Vincent Peale says, I don't know. You'll have to figure that out on your own. Like he was, I get the impression he was kind of frustrated with the guy. Plus he's like, dude, dude, you're so far off the game. I don't know what else to tell you other than expect a miracle. So he's like throwing kind of like this big Hail Mary going going for broke he had nothing else to say so that's the premise that the book starts on so this guy is pondering this thing what did he mean by that what did he mean by that he eventually figures it out and his life turns around but in the book norman vincent peel says look let's talk about what a miracle really is and i'm going to quote you i'm going to quote right from this book here i'm reading he says by a miracle we do not mean some strange happening unknown to scientific procedure read the dictionary and you will find that a miracle is defined as some great and wonderful quality that can be brought to pass it can be brought to pass right so that's what norman vincent peale says about miracles and and part of the reason why i encourage writing down miracles that have happened to you or miracles that have happened to other people is it's going to bring them down more to the like common occurrence level, right? We want to bring miracles down off the pedestal and put it more into, into our experience. Years ago, I had this mantra that I would often start my day with, and it was something to the effect of um, miracles will follow miracles and wonders will never cease. You know, this day will be super awesome. And that was a little mantra that I would say to myself, because I want to have miracle upon miracle in my experience. Maybe you do too. <laughs> and I want to continually live in a state of like wonder and awe 
of the human experience that this constant flow, constant stream of awesome experiences are flowing into my life. That's how I want to be. And that's, you know, that's uh, built upon the, the idea of setting an intention for your life and for your day and even the, these moments, right? Every moment you're setting a new intention. And so if you intend to find miracles, you're probably going to find a lot of miracles. So that is the second, I think we're on number two, become a believer in the, in the process, right? When you believe that's the foundation and everything's going to flow from what you believe is everything is like built upon our beliefs. Third and final, which is my favorite. I know the first two are super awesome, but this third one's my favorite. He says, be right within think and act right. And I was kind of blown away when I read that in here. I'm not surprised because this is a common theme. This is a lot of what my work is built upon, the idea of self-concept and self-image and putting yourself in alignment with the experiences you want to have, right? Changing yourself, that's why I was super excited that he talked about this. Changing yourself to be to be a person who has miracles happen in their lives, right? I'm a person who has a lot of miracles. You're a person who has a lot of miracles. Everyday miracles are flowing into your experience. If you build that into your self-concept, you're gonna have more miracles in your life, right? Because how we perceive ourselves becomes our reality, right? Perception is reality. I always like to, to share this uh, little nugget, this little thing I think about, about the human experience in general. Like we, there are, what, almost 8 billion? seven plus billion people on the planet right now and all those people are having vastly different experiences why is that i mean we come from one we come from the same place we're going to the same place we're living on one planet why are we having many different experiences i believe it's due to our perceptions we're all having different perceptions and we all have a different self-concept right and because of that we have different experiences and and it makes for a rich life, right? It makes for a rich experience as for human beings because we're learning from one another. We get to experience one another in different ways, different foods, cultures, creations, etc. But to raise our experience, it never hurts to build into our self-concept. Oh, miracles happen to me all the time. Good things happen to me all the time. I have a wonderful family and friends. I have wonderful health. I'm just a naturally healthy person. I'm a naturally wealthy person, right? When you start to build those things into your self-concept, you're going to start seeing more of those in your experience. That's why I'm a big fan of self-concept. I always talk about it as being like, if there was one button you could push or one lever you could pull, and you didn't have to do 20,000 things like, every self-help book you know you've ever read you're going to write down what that book was and how you can make it in your experience like if if i could share one thing with people it would be hey change the way you see yourself change the way you think about yourself and the way you feel about yourself and doing that one thing that one simple thing rewriting your self-concept and weaving into that story how you really want to be right if you want to be a person who has miracles happen all the time write that into your self-concept right because we're pinning our self-concept all the time and we have the ability to do that, right? We're ideas, a collection of ideas. And when we change the idea of ourselves, we change the experiences we have. So I was thrilled to see that in this book and I had to bring it out as one of the third nuggets. The story unfolds like this, you know, he's working with a guy who's troubled, he's challenged, nothing's going right for him in his life. And the guy realizes eventually that the reason things aren't going right for him in his life is because he is not right. He wasn't right within, right? He wasn't thinking right. He wasn't acting right. And therefore, nothing was going right in his life. Because remember, we're constantly emanating those wavelengths. So those like subtle vibrations of energy out into the universe. And the intelligent universe that we live in is picking up on those and going, oh, this person is expecting this this person is emanating this vibration i'm going to match that because you know like attracts like and vibration is one of the laws of the universe and so when you put those in in conjunction with one another things will happen to you that are positive and, and awesome so those are three big ideas from expect a miracle make miracles happen by norman vincent peel i want to invite you to subscribe to my email list and when you do i will give you access to a collection of tools much like this one 
called Tools for Conscious Creators, and that's the best of the best ideas that I've discovered on my own journey and some of the tools I've created myself to help you be a more conscious creator so that you can create more of the things you want in your business, your life, success, uh, prosperity, abundance, money, awesome relationships, all those things that you want. Again, you can get that at gmarphillips.com, subscribe to my email list. I'll also send out emails on a semi-frequent basis, minimum once a week, to help you on your journey and give you little ideas and insights, share with you, and hopefully that'll be beneficial to you. So, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, all the best, health, wealth, and success. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. I, I would love it, and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.